Just about what it is, I guess, survival skills right now. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Worst of it isn't behind you yet, though, I suppose. I don't think so. No? Mm-hmm. No. What do you do with the bitterness that must be in your heart? Um, <clears throat> I don't know exactly what I do, frankly. I think I feel more... I think a little emotional upset today, frankly. I don't think I should be, but uh, just the idea of coming here, I think, mm-hmm. upset, me, upset me. And, uh, well, I don't know, even last night I was kind of dreaming, you know, confused things you know, to do with my former husband and so forth, you know, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. Because usually I'm busy with the, my things I'm doing, my work, my mm-hmm. teaching, sorry. Mm-hmm. I don't have time to be it. <laughs> Too mm-hmm. depressed in a sense. Mm-hmm. Well, I suppose if you look over a period of time, I'm better this semester than I was last semester, for oh, instance. That's good news. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, definitely. I mean, it's a great improvement. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Still, what does one do with it? Yeah, what was it? Bitterness of one in one's I don't know. I wish I knew. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so do I. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Such a 
such a real fact, isn't it? It is. It is a mention. Well, I'm struggling, I suppose, with emotional and emotions on one side, and also just um, the logistic of living. You know, I mean, just what to do and um, mm -hmm. which way to go, how to earn a living, and. Um, mm -hmm. Should I start divorce proceeding now or in the situation of me and I can't afford to pay the lawyer and uh, you know, I mean it's her. And I don't feel emotionally strong enough to even call home or talk to Walter. I just cannot do it. I know I I'm not running entirely out of money, so I'm putting that off and I think <clears throat> I've decided when I when I need money or something, I will just play call the gal that works for us and just uh, ask her to relay the message. I don't even want direct contact at that point. And I know it's going to come a point I need things from her or clothes, for instance, and I'll have to have some kind of contact and I don't even want to have it. I don't, I don't feel I want, I cannot do it at this point for some reason. So that's where it's at. Um, I'm making plans to go to see my mother in France this summer. Mm -hmm. I'm making plans to go and see my mother in France mm -hmm. this summer. Well, either I may have some vague offer that I might get a free trip if I go with a group of people, but I'm not counting on that very serious place. <coughs> I am, in fact, I started booking a, a passage for mm -hmm. early June, uh, early May, I mean mid May, I should say, and uh, my mother's going to pay for the transportation, but I have not told her what has happened. She does not she know. Does it. No, she does not know. I just cannot write it, and I just don't want to. Oh, and I'll open a floodgate for my mother, anyway. <laughs> you know, she's not the one that's going to be very helpful in the situation. So I'll, I'm postponing that till I see her and just talk to her. She may even have liked Walter. She may what? She may have even liked him. Uh, I'm not too worried about that part. I mean, she more was going to be more. I don't know. She, she. Uh, I, I don't quite know. I'm not going to predict what she's going to say, but uh, I don't know exactly. But what she's going to suggest maybe another thing. And I, I don't know. Just, but anyway, I'll have to tell her eventually. Anyway. Mm -hmm. right. Don't envy that. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, I, I probably, first reaction is going to say he's crazy, which is probably <laughs> not, not a educated reaction, which maybe cover the thing pretty well. Um, uh, beyond that, I don't know exactly what she's going to say. Well, she advised me to even divorce him or just uh, hang in there and just try to get out what you can. I don't know. I have no idea what she's going to say. Mm -hmm. I may not follow what she's saying either, but mm -hmm. I'm just trying to guess. But she's a kind of woman who would have an opinion. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, oh, I mean, she is, yeah. She's not getting any younger, so in a way, it may be upsetting to her, too, to some extent. So I just, you know, I don't, not looking forward to mentioning it, but I'll have to. And your father isn't around? No, he's dead. He died a long time ago. Mm -hmm. He probably would have killed my husband if he had known that. <laughs> he would have killed. He would have killed. He him. might have. Well, at he least <laughs> good attempt at it. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. well, I don't know. Maybe I'm speaking 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 figuratively. I don't know really. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. So. Maybe that's what he would have literally done. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. Didn't want something like that done to his darling daughter. No. Well, sure. I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Why should he? No, I don't think he'd appreciate that at all. Because I suppose my mother is going to be very upset also in that sense. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, my mood varies a bit. It goes up and down depending on the days, I suppose, mm -hmm. and depending on external factors, which are not always, you know, entirely within my control, too. Mm -hmm. A 
and um, well, I suppose what probably bothers me the most, I think we talked about it. It's the fact I'm not very young anymore. If I was, you know, younger, I suppose it's, mm -hmm. you know, I could feel like, you know, there's a future ahead, mm -hmm. I can cope with the future, but there isn't much of a future. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's why I feel very sorry for myself at that point. Mm -hmm. Well, that's only natural. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How does one survive these things? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not a you're a woman not without courage too. So that, so does everybody tells me, but <laughs> tell me, but it does not, not necessarily make you feel any better. No. no. Some, some people die bravely. It doesn't mean they really want to do it. <laughs> mm. Yeah. <clears throat> I suppose I don't have any alternative. There's no, no going back. Can't go back. What I had has been destroyed. Excuse me? What I had was destroyed. Was destroyed, yeah. Mm. And I suppose <clears throat> looking back, I was fighting very hard to, to keep things going as they had been, or, mm -hmm. or probably prevent Walter from going on with this affairs or whatever, because I knew what once that would take place, there would not be any coming back at that point. And there isn't now. Or the only solution would be for me to to go back and watch him do his thing and be just totally an object in the house or whatever, you know, I mean, just how dreadful. Yeah, I mean, part is what I was. This was, I guess, basically, I was kind of fighting with something else. I, you know, maybe mm -hmm. I didn't have a very good picture of what was going on. I was trying to get something else for me, but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. So, there we are. It's extraordinary what people endure in it. Well, this makes me feel a bit like a specimen under glass slightly, but mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway. What I need at the moment is maybe some practical advice rather than... Practical <laughs> advice, right. Mm -hmm. yeah, or a good lawyer or something. Yes, yeah. right. That too would help. Mm -hmm. Well, I do have more or less a lawyer, but I cannot initiate anything now for just financial reasons mm -hmm. and so on. And, uh, mm -hmm. and not knowing, you know, if I can get a position and where I will be located and, you know, what's going to happen. It's sort of... I got another year of schooling, basically, to do before, so that you're before I know. That's why I'm getting a certification. So your I husband actually has control of the whole financial thing. Mm -hmm. Well, he has, and of course he claims that um, he's not making any money, so there's no money. Is it true or not? I don't know. I know we had a business. Well, we still have it, you know, it's le still legally have my name. But it, was, it never made that much money. It was always, you know, kind of touch and go. Mm -hmm. So... But you ran it together. Yes. Mm -hmm. Of course, it could have been better if... Uh, 
before Walter and Ike turned his back to it. You know, he was doing as little as possible. For In the residents. business, too. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. It was just, mm -hmm. I know things needed doing physically. I mean, just he was ignoring it, just hardly putting any hours at the store. And every time he came up with an idea, it was just no, immediately, you know, whatever. You know, I mean, I got to the point that I just couldn't cope with that either. I was just so frustrated. Such a bad experience, you know. I mean, you could have been made into something positive. Mm -hmm. I always felt I, I was a weak one in a sense. I know you get admired for my great strength and resilience, I know. But on the other hand, in a natural relationship, I was a weak one. Mm -hmm. Maybe the tapes of me don't give that impression. I know that. Because mm -hmm. I was a, under top of tape one, at least in a situation like that at Well Talk. But uh, in a one-to-one -one relationship with him, I was not the positive force. No, I was not. always the one asking, you know, sort of permission, sort of, shouldn't we do this? Don't you think we should do that? And he was the one that said no. And it was the barrier. It was this wall, you know, so I was butting my head against that wall. And as for going ahead, occasionally, maybe I would go ahead, but then I felt I have no support around, you know, I just can go over myself and do things, you know, mm. the business or other things. And occasionally, it, occasionally I, I make decisions, I and mean, I'm good at decisions in a sense, but I make mm. decisions, but then I get punished for it, you know. I antagonize him, I get insulted in front of customers, you know, mm. so I have to break down. Mm. Get criticized, you know, in the whole time, you know. Got me crying at a store a few times just in front of the employee, the way it treated me, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. so. But you had worked together in the store for many years. Yeah, we started in 69. In 69? 20 years ago. Yeah. May I ask what you did in the store? What was the store about? Uh, interior decorating, I would, I see. well, picture framing mostly, saw wallpaper, mm -hmm. draperies. You know, art supplies, it's very general, you know, small town kind of broad coverage of things to do with a home or decorating and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, we started there because um, Walter was in business with his parents, uh, small manufacturing, and uh, his father sold his interest uh, to, well, it was a partnership originally between the father and the, and the uncle, my uh, Walter. And when Yoko died, his son, his son inherited, and my father-in-law then sold his interest. You know, it was a big family fight over the thing. But anyway, so I left Walter without any job. Mm. So we had to find something, you know, and the mm. store was something. Mm. And together you began this enterprise. Yeah, well, it was a go ongoing business when we oh, I purchased see. it. You bought it, I see. Yes, I see. we bought it. And uh, then, you know, the economy, so especially in a small town, so it goes up and down, you know, and it's not real great either. And we're very, very tied to the business. It was like working six days a week, you know, hard to get away. So in a way, they weren't, you know, not very pleasant here. They were just sort of struggling in a sense. Mm -hmm. But I think it's something that Walter never really wanted to realize that he was sort of, he had an image of himself as sort of a country gentry type person, you know, one does not have to work in life, you know. It was a little unrealistic. I mean, I come from an intellectual background, so I was never really in commerce or that sort of thing, but on the other hand, or in business, but on the other hand, I, you know, I've got to work, I've got to work, and I'm practical when it comes to things like that. So you threw yourself into it? Oh, yes. Yeah, because when I got married, it was the idea, no wife of mine is going to work, you know. So I was home, not doing anything. At the time, I could have furthered my education, I got someplace, and, uh, and then when I was needed, you know, come and work, that's it. <laughs> Which we did. I mean, I was always a very compliant one and helpful, you know, the helpmate, mm -hmm. perfect helpmate. Doesn't pay. Should have done my thing and time to go jump the lake. But so you really depended upon you in a major way to keep this enterprise going. Well, of course, but I don't think you ever admitted it. Mm -hmm. Now the theory is uh, 
For years it was, if I did something, I did it because I wanted to, so you don't, you don't owe anything to people if they do it because they want to. And number two thing, he could have died as, as well or better himself. Hmm. So in that case, you're not very needed either. <laughs> <laughs> with a philosophy, you know, you sort of, mm -hmm. you don't expect a lot of things of gratitude, you know. So he had your services, but he didn't really have to No, he didn't want, he didn't want to, no, 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 no. no. Mm -hmm. Or a pat on the back occasionally, you know. Oh, yeah, sure, 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 of course, of course. But in general, it was always, well, you've done it because you wanted to. Maybe I'm doing now because I want to. I mean, you know, I mean, you survive because you want to, I guess. I don't know. You just, mm -hmm. when does it stop? You're wanting to, I wonder. Hmm. Well, you did it probably brought you to make something of the marriage, too, as well as the business. I tried. I certainly, mm -hmm. I certainly tried. To make them both work. Sure. Yeah. It wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. No, because he, he does not have a very good Tamper or temperament. I mean, is can be very difficult, difficult, difficult. You know, but little things are you know just sets them off, and that's it. You know, it's, it's very hard. But it's in the past, in a sense. But uh, still, where I come from. Because another catastrophe of this marriage is my son. So. I don't know. I wonder if he's beyond, normally balanced, ma you know, mentally balanced, or he has you know, problems of his own. I suspect he's not exactly. I don't know. I think he has some problems, emotional problems, certainly. And um, so he may be the spitting image of his father. Physically, it looks like me. Physically, looks like you. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't think it's the son. I mean, physically. I mean, it's it's, it's dark. It's it's got you know eyes. It's got my hands. Even you know, that belt wise, you know, it's mm -hmm. like that. But you never seen him. No, no. But um, emotionally, I don't know. Maybe he looks more like his father. That's for sure. So now my son hasn't talked to me since before Thanksgiving. Did Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's in Madison, he's a first year law student. And uh, now he won't have anything to do with me anymore. And he's gone through a period like that a few years back, you know. And his father, of course, always sort of encouraged him. If Jerome was disrespectful, it was always well. You deserve it. He could do no wrong. Me. Yeah. And, um, you know, if it was an argument with Jerome, you know, I'd, you know, tell him to do something, you know, you know tell him he's always big bad. Then what would say, well, I'm not going to take side in that, you know. You, you just treat us like two kids square boy, you know, I mean. And kids can talk back, you know, I mean, they're not perfect, you know, that. And, you know, just, Oh, don't bite your own, or don't, you know, just. And now I suppose Walter is thoroughly enjoying the situation as far as I'm concerned. He's quite aware of what's going on. I don't know to what extent, but at least he's aware that Trum does not want to talk to me. And uh, that's why I said, well, if you don't want to talk to her, that's fine. You know, she switch what she deserves. That's it, you know. So in Walter, I still has a power at this moment, you see. You know, it was always the one, may I do this? Okay, he still has a power now. If you talk to Jerome and say, Jerome, you, you talk to your mother, you be nice to her, Jerome would do it. See, it's still that, that they have that power over me yet. He has a lot of power, doesn't he? <coughs> yeah, I been the weak one, I said. Mm -hmm. I have been the weak one, I know. Mm -hmm. He has the power over the money and the power over the board. And 
Partly because you say because you were the one who was trying to make it work. I suppose. Yeah. I suppose if you don't care, if you don't care, you can walk away from it. You know? Yeah. Huh. And I will end up story the history of what's going to be written by Walter. I'm the one I walked away. I'm the one I wanted to divorce him. Mm -hmm. I'm the one if any if there is any loss, material loss due to the divorce and the splitting of assets, eventually it will be my fault. I will have caused it by my action. Mm -hmm. It's there, it's written already in a book. No in situation. I was necessarily blamed. Sometimes circumstances were against me. Well, even at the fact that, you know, we had a certain better financial position when he was involved in that family business, and I was pulled out, you know, and that was circumstantial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know what Tara said, I go around with a little black cloud over my head. Well, some of it is really is things that has happened, you know. My father managed to shoot his big mouth in France and get into trouble with his position too, or without money. And you know, I mean, those things. I had nothing to do with it. I was, you know, a child. In your own growing up. Well, when I was growing up, you know. So I mean, I can say, you know, I did it. Though I was, you know, nobody, nobody asked my advice. In fact, if they had, they probably wouldn't have done what they did. I was smarter than that. <laughs> but uh, that was it, you know. And then something similar happened with your the original business of your husband. Yeah. Fell away. Well, I, that was a family fight. It was a stupid fight. And I had nobody asked my opinion either. I mean, there was, you know, Walter and his father, and, you know, there was main stock and leave, leave the little one out, outside of the house. So there was <laughs> I had no, no input whatsoever. Well, what you tried to do afterwards was to build up something worthwhile. Hmm? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I was an asset in a business, no doubt. I mean, people respect me, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm good at customer relation, and you know, things mm -hmm. go bad. I, you know, I can talk to people. I can all oh, problems and the merchandise doesn't come right. You know, I get on the phone, talk to people, get things figured out. You know, well, I'm I'm pretty good at this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. You may have set the taste of the store too. Oh well. Yeah, my reputation never hurt. No, I I have a good reputation all the way around. I really do. I mean, mm -hmm. be it morally or whatever, or taste-wise, or, you know, it was any good reputation. Mm -hmm. Considered smart. I don't know how terribly smart I am compared to others, but, you know, at least, you know, mm -hmm. maybe average or above average, likely. So this is, you're saying this is really the third time that uh, Sort of the oh, yeah. structure of your oh, life yeah. has been torn oh, away, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Your father and then the first business and now this. Uh -huh. huh. No, it's sort of cyclical. Yeah, history repeats, isn't it? These men who seem so promising and capable. Huh. Yeah, I guess so. Your well, father. maybe I was raised with a the European, you know, more so in Europe than here. Well, the wife is a woman, a second citizen, you know, to some extent. And uh, I suppose you sort of look up to, to a man for salvation or something like that, you know. First it's your father, and then it's your husband, and you know. Well, you may have adored your father, though. I mean, that may have been a terrible well, shock. 
my father was not all that perfect, and I'm aware of a lot of things. And, you know, I liked my father, and, you know, he was, he liked me very much, I know that, but not that he had, I'm not that blind to his fault, no, I never was, really, in that sense, no. no. You weren't surprised by the, what ensued? Well, it was, I don't know, all set circumstances. Because you said that, you know, if you had your say-so, you might have been able to save it. Well, yes, yeah, right, yeah. But I was just a kid anyway, so. No, I mean, children, especially years ago, young people, years ago in France, if I had less, less say-so than he would, you know, here nowadays anyway. So you have to realize you've got a difference in generation, you've got a difference in culture, and, uh, you know, so it, it's hard to even put it in perspective, but, um, and it, it's always, it was very f close family oriented, you know, my, my family was anyway, and I suppose maybe more so years ago it is this mm -hmm. days. And, uh, in fact, I was an only child, you know, I mean, there was also lots of factories, you know, built in, I think. But your mother, too, must have been terribly shocked by the collapse of everything. Well, it wasn't easy for her, I know that. No, it wasn't. Well, my mother, I guess, is a survivor in a way, too. She somehow put it back together again? Well, she's not getting as big a pension as she could have, which is the only... If she, if he had not... Mm -hmm. That would just be it for her, certainly. Well, there were some political things. It was just, you know, lots, lots of her tone. I don't even want to go into it. It's useless anyway, but... Um, did she appeal? I mean, did she get herself a lawyer and, and, and make a fight for it? Well, yes. Things were sort of serious mm -hmm. right now, but uh, money's well lost in the process anyway. It's, they were? Yeah. So she didn't have the pension that she could have? Not as much, no. Not as much. Well, to this point, I suppose, like I say, I don't have the money for a lawyer, which is true. And I don't want to dig in a little bit of reserve I have. Well, it's invested, you know, the stock market is down lately, so, you know, it's not a good time to sell. Basically, it's what it amounts to. You have a few thousand dollars aside. I don't have too much, but just two or three thousand. I don't want to dig into that because now it's the wrong time to sell, period. But the point is, okay, even if I got a lawyer, I. The God I have the divorce, I don't know, I'd have some properties on my hand which I would have to manage or sell, and it's it's such a complicated process when you're not there and I'm in class, in school time to study, you know, I mean, I just, I don't know if I should go ahead with it or just plain wait, you know, I, I just don't know what to do at this moment, what is best for my interest. Well, I, I certainly, it's a very complicated yeah, process. Yeah, it is very legal, it's a complicated process. But I wish, at the same time, it's quite frightening because you, don't, you want to be sure that you you know come out of this kind of situation better than your mother came out of that other one. Yeah. And it may be that, you know, that some planning right now would set yourself up better for the future than to wait. Yeah. I don't think if I go ahead now, I'd have either the time, the physical time and emotion capability in coping with that, that's, that's a thing, you know. I've, I've got a house full of stuff and it's mine, you know, I've got to sort it out. It's a physical work of that, you know. It's mind-boggling, you know, it's just a huge moving you're talking about. Well, I, I didn't mean to under, yeah. underestimate the and extraordinary where, you know, difficulty I mean, I to, of these you know, things, you know. I, it's just time, in the meantime, you're trying to get ahead with your education yeah. and all this business. You know, I mean, there's a physical thing sorting out, you know, three years of accumulation in one house, you know, I mean, you're talking about a lot of work. But that house, too, may be owned jointly by the two of you. Oh, no, no, it's as far, well, in fact, is that the Wisconsin law protects the woman anyway. So properties or anything, it's divided right in half. But it's it's in my name, you know, on the papers anyway. Mm -hmm. no. no, you could not sell without my knowing, for instance, because, uh, you know, it has to be signed. So, I mean, that is not, I'm not worried about that. 
Well, but you, the business in me, in me, like the dog, which, which is a problem now. Who knows? The what? The business in me, like yes. Yeah, well, yeah. that's another thing. Yeah. You know, yeah, and, yeah. and the thing that the thing that uh, frightens me yeah. is that you know, oh, if you look at the sort of trajectory of things, you, you know, going from the situation with your father and the better business situation in the first ten years of your marriage, and now this situation, which has fallen away, and is can what remains in turn fall away? And um, is there something in there that should serve as a warning to us as to, as to what's the best way to ensure that you, know, you come out of this a lot better than you came out of these other situations? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I felt like accusing you of something. Okay, go ahead. I don't know you. I just arrived. I'm a stranger. Strangers tell me ought to keep their mouth shut. Well, it's all right. I don't <laughs> say what you have to say. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I certainly do have an idea. Say it. Over many years at this, I've discovered that most psychiatric, psychiatric ideas are wrong. <laughs> Theories are proved and disproved all the time, I know. <laughs> um, well, I'll tell you what I was thinking. Yeah. I, I was thinking to myself that maybe I said to myself, I said, maybe this woman is, is really a very capable person. Maybe she's even very smart. And that uh, all along she suspected many of these things. But she wanted to make a go of it. She wanted to be what is called a good wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that even when there were times that things seemed dangerous or foolish, she would speak up, but there was something holding her back. And that uh, maybe there is what we, what we like to call, what everybody else calls, a conflict. If there was this capable person who could do a great many things, who may have seen much more clearly than the men of the family, who at the same time felt that she should be, what, an old-fashioned woman? Mm -hmm. And that the battle between those two things might have sometimes canceled out wisdom. Hmm. And I was thinking to myself, if that's true, and I could not know, if that's true, then this is a crisis. Because if she doesn't use her sharpest instincts and get those supported and further sharpened by the best opinions, once again, things might fall away. Mm -hmm. That would be very bad. Mm -hmm. Three blows is enough. I go to protect myself, in other words, financially. Every way. <laughs> even, even at the risk of making some people think you're not a good little lady. People like your mother, people like your conscience. No, my conscience is not bothering me. I want to say that loud and clear. My conscience is not bothering me. Sort of way. I don't feel married. I got out on dates. Good for you. And I don't give a damn. I don't feel married. No, that's a good story. No, I'm not. I mean, that's a positive. I probably <laughs> can get to blow with somebody over there the other day. But I'm so late. I, I, didn't, mean, I didn't mean to understand. No, no, I don't mean that. No, I've been a faithful one. Never looked at the man in 30 years. But I don't feel married now. Good for you. But you see what I mean. I see what you mean, <laughs> okay, but I want to precise, I mean, for some reason I do not feel there anymore. And I went, quick way, my way well, a long time ago, and that's it. That's good, that's a good sign, I think. That, that, that means is you positive, go. I mean, that, that is one thing out of this whole entire mess, I know. <laughs> well, that means you can go forward, and that's good. Yeah. 
But in this business thing, this pattern of these businesses gives mm -hmm. me the creeps. I know, it doesn't be the creeps too, because I've had, normally they had 200, another sad story, I've had cancer a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and they had hysterectomy, which I'm okay now, I'm being checked pretty early, but you know, I have those, those awful nightmares, what about if I get sick, I'll die in my, myself well, in my little corner, I'm old. And that's, that's because of the, let me, let, me me give, me let, me, let me give you a superstition of mine. Best way not to get cancer or to have recurrent cancer is to succeed. Oh, I know. It's this stress will be on cancer. By golly, what kind of stress I'm under right now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't exactly help me either. But I'm not even thinking about that. But like I say, this is all those, you know, little things so in the I ground. I know. What I'm saying is, and I, and I, yeah. I hope you, I'm sure you're, you're sensitive. Well, sensible. I know that I don't when it comes to finances either, frankly. But I'm not quite stupid when it comes to that either. No, so. I'm, sure you're not, I'm sure you're not stupid yeah. at all. That's what I mean. Uh, yeah, I know. But there may be this part of you which is a little inhibiting. And uh, my hunch is that you'd be wise to consider seriously taking what money you have and using a piece of it to get the best possible legal opinion. Mm -hmm. And you got to do that. You have to scout around a lot. Make sure you got somebody who's... I think I found someone pretty good. Very good. Yeah. Check, check it out yeah. over and over yeah. again. Yeah. Very few people can be trusted. Check it out over and over again. And then follow that person's advice if it appeals to you. And, uh, and do it promptly enough so that if there's any erosion in this situation, mm -hmm. you're stopping it. Well, there it is. Advice from a stranger. Mm -hmm. uh, well, what bo bothers me the most is it's just a very physical thing. Is that I have a lot of, well, my mother has some of it too, actually. It's very fine, fine furniture from France, and a lot of it. Uh, you know, we're talking good, valuable antiques, not just, you know, a few junky pieces. And what the heck am I going to do with it? If I have to be storage, it's going to be costly. And I don't quite know where I'm going to go. And even, I'm not going to find those a are, position, a teaching position. I'm not even are, going to find one. I'm worried are, about it. Those are fussy concerns. Well, you know. Those are fussy. You act like your great compatriot, Napoleon. Don't worry about those things. Well, I'm worried because physically I'll have to do something about it. Oh, well. well, I've talked enough already. No, it's all right. It's all right. Nice to see you. Good luck. Thank you. Mm -hmm. She wanted you to feel sorry for her, though. I don't care. I feel sorry for any woman in the divorce situation. I know the first place of order, I'll say that. The courts just do not treat women right. If you don't believe that, look at the recent statistics on divorce settlements on, under these no-fault divorces, if you want to see how, the, how we gentlemen manage to fix these situations up. They're all sports were nice and equalized. There have been some very interesting studies by the National Organization for Women on what the actual results of those things are. And once again, the use of famous Americanism can get screwed. Right? So, and I and I thought to me it was very interesting that you know when you just press a little tiny bit on why she doesn't doesn't have that in tightly in place, she does all the things that she's accused of not doing. Accused of. She does, she does none of the things that she's accused of doing. That is, she's accused of being aggressive and pushy. But in fact, when she really needs to be that way, she isn't. And she's a little, a little old-fashioned French lady who's worrying about the furniture. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's not good. And I mean, I don't know whether it's, you know, I should keep my mouth shut. Yeah. But I've been through so many of these things in which this sort of thing has happened. And when women are aggressive, they're accused of being pushy. And that helps them back down a little bit from doing what they need to do. And, uh, and then they get fixed. She's got lots of vitality, got lots of courage. She's on her way. She's able to date now. She's go along. She's, she's, uh, probably pull it off again. But it would be a shame if for the third, fourth time, in this case in her life, she again had a promising situation that fell apart in her hands. Mm 
That's not good for the spirit. That's what, in my superstitious opinion, which I should not voice, but I will, that's what makes the cancers grow. And, uh, that, that maybe it hurts the immune system. All the bad little, bad little viral particles act up. I don't know what. It's very important to win. Maybe the reason that she has a bad reputation for being pushy and her son won't talk to her is that she's not pushy enough. Yeah. We're in the wrong places. In the wrong places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or does it with so much internal conflict that it comes across as, as abrasive? Yeah. yeah. It's one of these people that hollers yeah. and then lets you walk all over them. Yeah. And so then she's thought of as being a hollering person. Well, there's a sort of refusal to take care of herself. There's yeah. an element of that. I don't know who the best divorce lawyer in Madison is. There's usually only one or two good ones. It doesn't attract the best part of the bar. But uh, only two really good ones in Boston. I mean, when you come right down to it. When you decide you want to win and not just, you know, play croquet in the afternoon. I'm, I'm curious about, about how you think mm -hmm. it's how you think you can work with people who sort of refuse to take care of themselves. I mean, in some in some ways, that sounds like what she's been doing. Um, I mean, we all I mean, at the classic case is the woman who comes into the emergency room beaten up time after time, and you say, "Go to the baddest women's shelter, leave your husband, you know, take care of yourself." My God, you know, and they don't do it. I mean, what do you what do you do? What do you do with those people? Or men that don't take care of themselves, if I may say so. Well, you know the answer that our profession has given. There are four answers our profession has given to that question. The first answer is the one you hear least nowadays, although you used to hear it all the time. People who come in with a, with a sad story, some people we used to call them psychopaths because they would blame other people for their problems, which is characteristic of many psychopaths, in fact. But we often would dismiss them that way. You don't hear that so much anymore. But the three other stories we tell are, one is that the person makes poor selections and doesn't can't tell a wolf from a lamb. Point number two, and this is very popular nowadays, is that people somehow generate bad behavior from other people. In other words, they know how to turn on the worst in human nature, or doing what's called bringing out the worst in other people. And that's a very tempting idea, because I mean, one of the advantages of, of having been around a little bit longer than some of you is that, is that you get a chance to watch your friends get married. <laughs> and you watch the transformations and personalities that occur when people get married. And I've seen people who I thought were, you know, reasonably quiet citizens of the nation and, you know, meek soldiers of the great republic. And, and they married some <coughs> some nice girls who really adored them and Jesus, three or four years later you'd think that they were Adolf Hitler. Well, this is an old constitutional principle in the British monarchy, that is the idea that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and I know a few friends of mine that have become beasts in the process of being taken good care of. Mm. It's my quarrel with the Christian church. same quarrel Nietzsche and Marx had with the church. If you treat some people well, it turns them into monsters. And picking the kind of person you can treat well is one of the great arts of life, of course. But um, anyway, that, so that's a principle, the interactive principle. Those who bring out the worst in us. And then the, th the third principle is the one that's most used, actually, still. And of course, it's also received the most abuse. That's the idea that people who are abused want to be. They have t one of two failings. One, they have too much masochistic instinct. So in some weird way, they are enjoying being beaten up 
and uh, knocked around, raped, more or less deprived of their personal liberty. That's a very popular one. Or second, if you don't believe in the instinct theory of disease, you decide that the reason that they get beaten up so often is that they are enamored of and idealize the martyr position. And that they're emulating the good Jesus and want to be dying on the cross. I think those various principles. Psychopathy, uh, bad selection, interactive effects, masochistic instincts or idealization of suffering pretty much cover the waterfront of white people. Do, at least our theory is to white people do these things. Um, as for the correction of those conditions, a lot would depend upon which it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, for example, if you were very bad at selecting nice people, you need a good guide to pick out the wolves from the sheep. <coughs> if you have interactive potentials, if you're being too nice to somebody, turning them into a beast, then something ought to be done along those lines, right? Or thirdly, if some of these instincts are true or idealizations are true, maybe that maybe the can or cannot be done much about that. Generally, the, the analytic position has been that you should become aware of your instincts and then control them. I don't see much gain coming from that attempt, but that's what has been often taught. Maybe it's true. I have been very much uh, interested in the idea that, that, uh, that behaviors shape each other and that uh, people sometimes can profit seriously from being coached or trained in not encouraging bad behavior. I gained some of my courage in this idea by noticing how few people can abandon their good manners even in appalling situations. My favorite example is with people who can't hang up the phone. <laughs> I know people that if you call them up and begin to abuse them, all names, some of them, this is how some of these obscene phone call people keep in business, you, you go on saying perfectly awful things to them, they hold out of the phone and they keep it even next to their ear. And um, that's an amazing phenomenon. When you, you know, and you, and what I do is I say to them, now look, practice just taking this plastic thing and putting it back on that funny little carriage that comes with it. Huh? Just try it. For example, when, you, when your mother calls up on Sunday night to inquire after your so-called well-being, and, uh, and she becomes so uningratiating, so painfully intrusive, such a giant pain in the ass. Just at, just try, in the middle of the conversation, just putting it back on the thing. <laughs> now, the following, the following is going to happen. In a few minutes, the phone will ring again. And your mother will get down and, and she'll say, what happened? And you, now you have a very important decision to make. It's like, it's like whether you take the high road or the low road. <laughs> if you take the high road, you confess. Big mistake. <laughs> if you take the low road, you say something like, well, it must be a terrible connection. <laughs> Which is well, true. That, of course. <laughs> 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 yeah, which is true. Well, maybe eventually that idea gets the credit. So you say it's a bad connection. Well, then that, of course, now she's got it all explained. So she starts in again. After you've had a minute or two of that, you put it back on. And she... Uh, calls up, waits a little longer this time. Waits a little longer, you call up and you say, geez, it's a terrible connection. <laughs> now you've given her a choice, right? Maybe it's time we stopped this conversation. You see what I'm doing? I'm not reinforcing certain behaviors. I'm even letting enter into her mind the possibility that she is not the most popular phone friend I have. <laughs> just, just a little bit. I'm not, I don't want to make a federal case of it. I don't want to discuss it at all. I just want it to get into her head, preferably deep into her head like the mesencephal. <laughs> and I keep that up after a while. And so soon or later, people, you know, they don't call quite as often. That's a great relief, because, you know, all week long you have been dreading Sunday night. And uh, now, for the first time in your life, you can look forward to Sunday. That's not a small victory in this 
veil of tears. So the training people in that business of, of uh, managing each other is, a, is good work. Many people, of course, believe that marriage is a state that does not require management, that love conquers all. <laughs> there is no <laughs> That's nothing, true. nothing could be more remote from the truth. <laughs> no, no human relationship requires more management than marriage, or more dexterous management, than marriage, and receives less, which no doubt has something to do with the history of marriage. For example, many people feel that they should be reasonable and kindly to each other. Twin recipes for disaster in most local situations. My experience. And then if, they, if you say to them, well, no, I wouldn't be so nice to that person under those circumstances, or I wouldn't try to discuss it with him because, because he's a better arguer than you are. They then say, well, then I'll have to lose my temper with him, or I have to have a fight. And, and that, of course, is what stops them, because they're not good at fights either. So they have to learn intermediate behavior. And the best term I know for intermediate behavior is lowering the temperature. This is a very hard thing for people to do. Most most of our dearest citizens find it very hard to stay angry for more than five or ten minutes. But if you've got a real job of management on your hands, you have to remain cool for long periods until the other individual begins to wonder why the climate has changed in this family. And isn't there something that needs to be done? And so when you, instead of throwing your arms about your worst enemy when they come home, right? You stand looking at them as if perhaps they resembled, you know, one of the lower forms of life. <laughs> so that they come to you eventually and say, what's the matter? Now that's a great mistake to answer that question. Instead you say, hmm, I was wondering when you were going to begin to wonder. I'm not good at these things myself, you know, George Bernard Shaw said, those who those who do, those who can do, those who can't teach. Mm -hmm. But I worked for a man once who was perfectly marvelous at this. It, uh, I wrote a little bit about it in that contact book I wrote. And, uh, he, people used to come into his office. He was a very, he was the most powerful man in American psychiatry for about 20 years. And he was a superb manager of other human beings. He was a very unpleasant person, but he was an extremely good manager. Nobody ever put a hand on him. You wouldn't want to be like him, but you'd like to know some of the things he could do. Somebody would come into his office. I had my office next to him for a long, long time, and I often wondered because I'd see somebody come storming down the corridor. Fury! They're going to kill this bastard. He'd, he'd done somehow a perfectly outrageous thing, you know, and they were going to go in and the one purpose they had, they'd kill him to their family, their income, anything. Atomic warfare, hell with it. They're going to kill this bastard. And they'd go into his office, ready to kill him. I'd watch that many times. In about three or four minutes, they'd come out. they smiling. <laughs> you would have thought they had received the Nobel Prize. You know? And I knew he never gave anything to anybody. <laughs> but this is the kind of thing he would do. They, he would, he'd often know they were coming. He could, he could tell from a hundred miles off that you were mad at him. And just as soon as you stepped across the door, He'd see and he'd know you were angry. He'd catch it out of the side of his eye and he would turn his back. He'd be standing looking out the window. And, they wouldn't, and the person would come in and then they suddenly see they don't see him looking there smiling at him. He's got his back to him. So what's that mean? But when he turns around, he sits down. He, he says, sits down like he's furious with something. Uh, and he, could, he, was not, he was a man who remained very equitable but on the surface. But, but when it was evident that he was angry, it was perfectly clear. So this person who's furious is suddenly facing something. They don't know what's going on. I mean, does, does he know you're angry? Is he already ready? Is, is, has the individual who came in who was so angry done something wrong that he'd forgotten? <laughs> <laughs> so he doesn't explain anything. He just listens a little while. But the point is, at this point, the individual who's going to kill this guy is delighted if he can keep his own job. <laughs> <laughs> and so what happens by the end of it? The guy says, you keep your job. And so the guy goes out. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all over. 
Well, you see what I mean. Many good people don't like to do that because that is known as manipulation or management. Something handling people. It's common in the business world. It's often very useful. Well, anyway, let's talk about the patient instead of my notions. <coughs> I was wondering your thoughts on to the extent that she's looked up to her father and to her husband and they've let her down in disappointments on three occasions. How much of a risk is Andy at recapitulating that situation? And how can he avoid that? Or By getting a good lawyer. <laughs> himself? Himself or? Okay. <laughs> making sure she does. Bugging her about it. Because otherwise, he is colluding in what is a self-destructive path. Yeah. And he is to blame. I mean, how is a psychiatrist going to help a divorce settlement? Well, that's not our idea. That's not our thing. Now, so if she was a, if she was a, a, a paranoid schizophrenic personality, he might have to go to court with her to make sure that that she stayed there and didn't screw up the law practice, the law case. That might be necessary for some. The thing that carried out probably with this case, that's obviously not, not necessary, I would think. Couldn't one be colluding in her submissiveness that way by being a coach? Rather well, than having her take the initiative? That's a good point. But this is an emergency. You know, if, if things were fine, you could work up to that slowly. And then you wouldn't. Work. But at this point, if you let her down, you, you have a right, to, she has a right to be furious. This is, this is something she cannot, does not know how to manage if the example of these other cases is significant. I may be wrong about that. These other instances. You, you could make the argument <coughs> that she should do exactly the opposite of that and not get a divorce lawyer. That in fact, this lady has pursued her her poor uh, husband into the, the only empire that she couldn't invade, and that what she's doing now is actually a positive thing for her, sort of sitting back and waiting for him to make the next move, rather than always being the one who makes the first move. I mean, that she's right. You know, if she does anything now, she's likely to worsen her position in terms of having to store her furniture, and, and she's sort of sort of settled in nicely in the school and, and doing her own her own thing. Well, you, the reason I don't agree with you, maybe you're right. Right. In this business, it's you know our opinions, but the reason is that I'm not saying the lawyer will do anything. I'm not. I'm not saying that she'll go to court or move or, or put her furniture, but she should have it looked over by someone who is watching the whole thing. Because I mean, for example, if he has a clever lawyer, he can get the assets in that business transferred to somebody else, and she won't. She'll have a hell of a time finding them thereafter. That's the kind of thing that has to be prevented. It may not be necessary, maybe not possible, but someone should know all about that. It may not do anything. And the evidence that she was the one who first did things, I'm not sure of. The way she tells it is she was sort of watching on the sidelines. She pitched in, she was resented for pitching in, but she was trying to make the thing work. It's a perfectly cooperative exercise. Well, the way she, it's interesting the way she says it. She says that, that she did say she wanted to do it. She was a good, she said she was a good sport, she wanted to do it. And therefore, when he, when she would complain to him, he would say to her, well, you wanted to do it. And that was true. She did want to make a go of it. I don't mean that, the, that doesn't mean that she initiated it. Uh, the evidence that she directly initiated her father's problem it would be certainly very thin. The, the evidence that she initiated the loss of her husband's initial business is also very thin. Maybe I should have known more about how the decorating business got started. Well, I had the advantage of seeing the two of them interact in the They were quite cooperative in their, um, in their efforts to unseat each other. <laughs> You used an interesting trust of words. You said, I'm, I'm not sure if I should accuse you of something. Because this is a woman who's very sensitive to, to false accusations. Comment a little bit about your choice of, of words. 
that I should not accuse you of something. Yeah, that's right. I thought it was, it was very nice because that's what she's most sensitive to is being falsely accused, mm -hmm. which is what she's felt all, all along about her husband. Well, you know, I felt very uneasy about my whole participation in this. I mean, here you are, there's a number of you all gifted and hardworking and well informed about this case. I come along on the basis of a very small amount of information and suddenly begin to pontificate with it. I mean, anybody watching that would say, what this guy, what's the matter with this guy? I mean, well, who's he think he is? You know, has he, has this woman suckered him out? Draw, drawn him into this sort of circumstance? It would be very easy to, to come to that conclusion. I was thinking about that for most of the time I was talking to her. And I thought about that a lot, and I decided that that was, that I was conscious of that, and I could see, see why it might be so, but I didn't think it was the predominant thing. And I just simply cannot imagine a circumstance in which a woman in this position does not need a lawyer. Can you? Course, the question is, how can you go wrong backing the, the reasonable or the usual thing? Mm -hmm. That's what that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, and you know, and then when and and then when she told me that she had money put away that she didn't want to spend or antique she could have sold to get this, I said to myself, "There's another reason this woman is not doing the logical thing." Mm -hmm. And then I came back to my theory, which was that she's in conflict about aggressiveness, like women have been all trained to be. Mm -hmm. So that she's a. For all her cantankerousness, she's a sitting duck. In fact, in more, more because of her cantankerousness, she's a sitting duck because it's easy to dislike her. There's some evidence to back that in the sense that she was tempted to tolerate him going for these affairs and even risk getting, you know, considerable risk of AIDS. I mean, and it's been war between the two of them, you know, fairly. I mean, th this couple, the, the war between them was very impressive to us. I mean, and one, I mean, it was truly, uh, in one, one session she got up and probably tried to scratch his eyes out or grab him by the ear. I mean, it was really, wow. Yeah. Really war, and you could make, and, and that, you know, the, the both of them play very rough. I don't think you've quite seen the other side, but I don't think it alters your argument, actually, because uh, they're likely to play rough in the divorce as they did in the, and even rougher in the divorce. So I think uh, this, uh, you know, what would classically be called masochism on her part in the marriage. Um, well, that reinforces my could play out, you know, could play out badly. So I, I think the, pre the future is likely to be like the recent past, and, and in that case, sir, I think your advice is well taken. These excuses for not getting a lawyer are very few. And then, and then, and they're represented in other areas of her life. For example, um, she says, I can't do this because I'm too busy in graduate school. <laughs> You know, I mean, I, I, that, that won't do. I mean, I don't care how many courses she's got. That is, that, those things, that's just, that's apples and oranges. Mm -hmm. and, and then she says, well, I haven't told my mother yet. So she's ashamed of this. She doesn't, she doesn't even want to be divorced. I mean, and Jim's thing confirms that in spades. She goes on having a relationship, maybe having intimate contact with a man who, you know, who's put himself in danger of, of having a lethal disease. Mm. It took several months to know that. So for all her feistiness, it's not as feisty as she ought to be. Yeah, I think that's right. Well, and, and if you carry that ahead, then you then you ask, how's she going to manage her, her own dependency? Who, who's she going to depend on and how's she going to confront? Well, now you're talking about long term. You know, if she wants to come back and talk to one of the folks about you know, how she keeps this thing from happening again. That's another story. She can't make well, her do that. But can't you hypothesize that, that going ahead with being her own advocate then and that, that puts her in a position of having to, um, I mean, I, I think perhaps one of, the, one of the things that happens is she doesn't sort of, I, mean, I get the sense she wasn't even acknowledging this, that this has happened to her. I mean, by not acting, it's like she can pretend it's not happening. I agree with that. And it seems like one of the things that she has to confront if she gets more clear about the fact that it actually happened is that she doesn't have anybody to depend on. And these men who she thought were going to take care of her aren't there anymore. Yeah. 
And that could be in very confirma scary. In confirmation of this judgment, which I think is right on, is that, you know, twice in that she teared up and almost began yep. to sob, yep. which means that she's still at the point of, of mourning something, i.e. not admitting it's, it's gone yet. That's right. So, and, uh, so that uh, she's, she's trying to hold on to something that isn't there anymore. So that there's a so there's some sort of a grieving process that needs to proceed. Yeah, but it, and, but and you're you're seeing immediately also one of the implica implications of what I'm saying is that if we get too involved in letting that grieving process go naturally, certain legal dangers may be overlooked. I think it's easier for her to fight and be aggressive for what was rather than declare World War Three and go proceed forward and try for a divorce. That's very interesting. Yeah. So that she, attacks, again, yeah. Yeah. she attacks mm -hmm. Walter or me. Mm -hmm. um, As if there was something that could be done. The past to make things right. Why doesn't Walter shut up? Again, this conflicted aggressiveness. Yeah, it's like the herring gulls, you know, instead of defending their territory, they start pulling up the grass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, that's what sitting ducks do. They really can really make a lot of hay. But <laughs> well, you know, it seemed to work when you said, uh, you know, this would be at the risk of people thinking you're not a good little lady. I mean, that uh, that's the most animated she got. She said, "I'm not married anymore." That I was mean, remarkable. Which seemed to be well, a healthy. That piece. showed that was a, s a sensitive point, though. That, yeah. That she knows she is maybe too much of a good little lady. So she got mad and proved to me that she wasn't. Uh, yeah, but she still is. And she's, you know, she's all dressed up like that. Nice little. I noticed she kept pulling up her skirt. Oh, <laughs> yes, that was that was <laughs> oh but that was, another, that was another thing that gave me courage. You stay around said, a while? What's she doing, flirting with me? You know, what's this, what, is she turning this into another little, pretty little French lady with a gentleman? Boy, she's got this bad design of myself, I better say something. Hmm? But you could look at it from another way, you could say, Havens, who has been flattered by seeing a little more leg of this French lady, is now going to march in there and straighten her out for him and show her <laughs> big prick he is, you know. <laughs> yeah, so I thought that maybe I might fall victim to that one. <laughs> well, as you see, I was busy, but I decided. <laughs> <laughs> Even to the rescue. <laughs> and a white horse. That's right. You're too tall, though, for now. Fell right off the horse. <laughs> I can't believe that the lawyers in Madison, Wisconsin, are different from the lawyers anywhere else. And, and no divorce letter I have ever met, knowing that she has a house, half interest in a house, and half interest in his business, right. even cares about getting a retainer. That's right. So this is nonsense. I don't. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want to do it. And do that's, a, that's a pretty. I mean, lawyers will go into some cases where they, you know really run some pretty big risks in their time, but this is not one I wouldn't think. I'm just thinking from the standpoint of managing the, the therapy, I mean, how, do you have any ideas about how to, I mean, I guess the question is, do you, do you go ahead and help her with this grieving that's going to come up if she moves ahead at the same time pushing her ahead? I mean, I mean, it seems like you have to do both at once, but I don't know. I mean. The man on the deck. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do, Andy? <laughs> yeah. Be a coach. Well, you know, let's, let's remember that this woman, the first thing this woman said is that she feels much better now than she did before. So yeah. if this is, once again, don't, if it works, don't fix it. I mean, some, this, is, this sounds good. So whatever you're doing, maybe she feel like doing it. Mm -hmm. And you know, I mean, I, there's a real pull from her, which I mean, she said midway through the interview that, you know, as you're being very empathic with her, she said, you know, what I need is some practical advice. Yeah. And yes, you need that to her to the point of, you know, get a lawyer, but it looked like she was very ready to sit around and get some more advice. So, you know, how do you balance that versus other issues? Of, you know, well, if you have any more good advice, maybe you should give it to her. I didn't. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, then yeah, the risk was to get into the, uh, the little fussy details. She wants to pull you in that. That's 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 more comfortable. Yeah, tell me what I should do about my furniture, yeah. doctor. You know, that's and true. then of course if I tell her, she'll tell me that's a lot rotten. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. But if you don't tell her, she's angry. Yeah. Well, not necessarily. I think you're understanding what you did in the sense that the, the admiration of her was pivotal to your being in a position and also your kind of projection of, of that you might even accuse her. I mean, her attention went up all about like, you know, she was accused and she was being, yeah, but you, you had prepared that. I mean, it was really a nice set of moves because you, you began to admire her as competent, as having taken care of things. I mean, that, and you've begun to do that too. So that it, sometimes if one hears this as only insisting on the lawyer, then one forgets the two other moves that preceded it, mm -hmm. which was the admiration set up the possibility of that lovely relief from her. And also you made it very clear that even though you knew one could accuse her, you weren't going to do it. It was a wonderful move because you alerted her to, to, that some people might accuse her. And you almost made noises. I thought, God, for a minute you might do it, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> But those were very nice moves, I mean, and so that if Andy merely went ahead and bowled her about getting a lawyer, he wouldn't have done the two other things that made possible the, you know, the delight. Also, he made sure that the advice was really, really wanted by her. I mean, he wasn't just coming in and giving advice. Yeah, she was like, yeah, she she stubborn <laughs> yeah, she'd get a, I mean, she's real stubborn. Without the preliminary moves, it, yeah. your advice wouldn't have taken in right. such a lovely way. I guess that's what I was worrying about, yes, how yes. to get to that in a way that would work. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I can see sometimes things are imitated and then, <laughs> and, then the, and then the person that gave them is discredited. Right, right. And then they say, I didn't mean it at all. <laughs> right. But well, she says that she's moving forward. She is moving Quite apart from this. Yeah. She feels better. And she's going out and she's looking around. She's doing her schoolwork. She's dating now. She's going to France. She's gritting her teeth. Gritting her teeth. But I still think she needs a lawyer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. You should all know that I'm the son and nephew of a lawyer, and that they, maybe I'm just drumming up business for the <laughs> No, no, it's more than that, isn't it? This is sort of the uh, French equivalent of a housewife economist that Sullivan consulted to. You know, he said, "Why not a, you know, why not a, a servant?" You said, "Why not a lawyer?" You see, and, you know, I mean, she in a way she's a lot like that. Only there's a lot of you know this noise and so on. But in a way, that case is very similar, where the woman was getting taken to the cleaners in a lot of ways and, and putting up with it. And that's more sort of in that direction, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. Nothing like that. Yeah. So it's not that far off. All right. Thank you all. See you tomorrow. Eight o'clock. <laughs>